nerds, what's up? Look, we need to talk again. I know we did this sort of recently with Payne and McKay and the whole Rings of Power debacle. And I know saying this probably won't make a ton of difference because you, my followers, are all lovely people who aren't doing this. But I'm going to talk about it anyway. We have got to stop review bombing things. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term review bombing, it refers to the phenomenon when a large number of people, or even people with multiple fake accounts, post terrible reviews for movies and books they don't agree with. Now, you might be saying, well, it's okay for people to post one-star reviews of things they don't like. That's their prerogative. And yes, it is, but review bombing in particular generally refers to when people are posting one-star ratings for things they haven't even watched or read yet, and usually only use the term when it's a coordinated effort to specifically target and take down a piece of media. Now, I know a lot of people have already talked about review bombing, specifically when we talk about the collateral damage and the ethics of it, since most review bombing centers around things that are racist, homophobic, or sexist. So today I actually want to take a little bit of a different track and talk about another side of review bombing, which is simple. Review bombing doesn't work. Review bombing doesn't even accomplish what the review bombers want it to accomplish. So it hurts everybody and helps no one. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how review bombing do actually does the opposite of its goal. And instead of taking down a piece of media, it tends to uphold it. We're gonna lightly touch on the collateral damage ethics of review bombing. We're gonna talk about solutions and go over why perhaps ratings feel pretty useless in this day and age. And overall, we're just going to all collectively touch some grass. I'll see you after the jump. So let's get right to the point. There are two primary reasons that review bombing doesn't work as intended. The first one is that it allows media creators to dismiss all criticism. They are able to say, oh, people just review bombed it. People just don't like it because they are racist or sexist. Everyone else likes it. And two, it often brings way more attention to the piece of media than there might've been otherwise. For point one, I think fandoms have been experiencing this a lot and it's extremely frustrating. I know I have touched on this lightly on other videos, but it is so frustrating to have legitimate criticism for a work lumped in with people who are throwing tantrums and review bombing and saying sexist and racist and homophobic things. Like I felt when I was making my criticisms of Rings of Power or Obi-Wan Kenobi, I had to go the extra mile to explain why my criticisms were valid because I did not want to be lumped in with those people. Because I did feel like I had valid criticisms that had nothing to do with that. It ends up becoming this uphill battle to just be able to legitimately criticize something because all the creators can just point to you as saying, oh, you just didn't like a strong female character, which clearly doesn't apply here. And as far as point two, guys, this is a classic thing that's been true for ages, but if we want to describe it in fandom terms, let's just think of how Hermione explains it in The Order of the Phoenix in Harry Potter. Harry does that whole interview to describe what actually happened the night in the graveyard with the Death Eaters. And he gives this whole interview and then Umbridge bans it. And Harry's like, oh no, I did all this work and now no one's gonna read it. And then Hermione's like, no, if there was one thing Umbridge could do to make sure every single person had read it, it was banning it. And this is just completely true to life. There's so many things I have never heard of until protests start happening around it. And once it starts getting protested, then it brings a ton more media attention to it. And it's on more people's radars, meaning more people are probably gonna experience the piece of media. Now, to be very clear, I am not advocating you never stand for anything or never protest for anything, obviously not. I'm specifically talking about the small, very low stake cases around pieces of media. Sometimes when people are protesting these things, I think if you just didn't say anything, it would probably just go away. In the end, in my opinion, for the most part, good, enjoyable media is going to rise to the top. But if people are making a big stink about something, and especially people who are being specifically like racist or homophobic or sexist about it, then you're gonna have a whole group of people who are going to want to support that media very specifically to prove a point. Does that make sense? So sometimes I'm like, look, if you don't agree with what's happening in your favorite adaptation, why don't you just, first of all, wait a second, two, try watching it. <laughs> and if you don't like it, great, give a review, don't feel like you have to review bomb it and then just tell your friends, hey, I don't think it's very good, don't watch it. 
The best way to hurt a piece of media you don't like is not giving it more attention and more views. It's actually not giving it views and not talking about it because that's how it doesn't make money. Something else that also frustrates me a ton about review bombing in general is it's just another contributing factor to making reviews pretty useless today. At this point, does anyone really think a Goodreads or Rotten Tomato score mean much? Between all the review bombing, all the people who just give it five stars before the book even comes out, like, what, what's the point? Because you review bomb something, it literally tells us nothing about a piece of media. You know, Amazon did this whole thing where they limited reviews for the first three days of Rings of Power release because they were hoping to stop review bombing. And first of all, review bombers can wait three days, so okay. But also two, it has a 38% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. And guess what everyone's saying? Oh, that's just the review bombers. Wouldn't it be nice if it just was 38% because it's a boring piece of media that basically no one I know liked? I mean, a couple people, but not very many people. Like, wouldn't that be nice? But as a review bomber, you have ruined it for everyone because now they can be like, well, it's not a true rating. And everyone else can be like, oh, it's not a true rating. Instead of it just, if people reviewed it in good faith, and it was bad like that, then people are like, wow, that was a failure. It also drives me crazy that you can review media before it's released. Now, I think Amazon has now made that impossible because of this review bombing stuff. I'm not sure if Goodreads, which I know is owned by Amazon, has done that yet. Let me know. But I remember a very specific instance is that Doors of Stone had five stars for a really long time. And I actually distinctly remember Pat Roth is making a comment on it and I found it. It's from 2012, which blows my mind, but here we are. And it's funny to also see now all the one star reviews because people are mad at Pat. Doors of Stone isn't out. It probably will never be out. And it has like hundreds of ratings. It's crazy. It's hard though, because I know there are advanced reader copies. And so sometimes there are genuine reasons you would need to review a book or something before it comes out. I don't know. That whole thing needs to be fixed. I guess I don't have a solution, so I'm sorry. Okay. I obviously do need to touch on the fact that there's a clear pattern with review bombing. It almost always has a piece of media that deals with the three things I said before, racism, sexism, and homophobia in general terms. And if you're one of the people who that makes them mad immediately, I just nicely encourage you to do some introspection on why that is. Why is seeing a female character superhero who was already female, wasn't like it was a gender swap, make you automatically so angry? Why is seeing a character not exactly how you pictured them? Why does it make you so angry? And I can understand being very connected to pieces of work, but to be angry enough that you want to go and mob mentality, tank something without even experiencing it, that's when I think you really need to like take stock of how invested you're allowing yourself to be. But to be clear, that does not mean those choices cannot be criticized ever. And that's the thing. When you participate in things like review bombing, it makes legitimate criticisms of those choices ineffective. Another example is I've been openly supportive of the cast of Wheel of Time. In fact, it was one of the only things I liked about it. I know that the casting for of a lot of the Eamon's Field characters doesn't fit with the book, but as the show moved away from Eamon's Field feeling very, very like small town, out of touch with the world, they aged up the characters, they made them less innocent, then for the world of the show, I think their character choices made sense and I think most of the characters killed their roles. Now that doesn't mean you can never criticize it. For example, the show has set up something very specific they kept Rand looking like Rand, which was very important to the plot, so I'm glad they did. But then they released the actress who's gonna play Avienda, and yeah, I did scratch my head a little bit. We have set up in this world multiple times what an AL looks like. It is a very relevant point of the plot moving forward. So yeah, Avienda's casting makes me scratch my head. Am I gonna go put a one-star rating on Wheel Time season two because of that? No, I'm gonna let it play out. I'm gonna watch it. Okay, that's what I'm just asking. It's not that you cannot criticize choices. It's that by going overboard and being so angry and not even letting a piece of media speak for itself, you're giving, like you're accomplishing nothing. Okay, the whole point of this video is that not only is review bombing extremely annoying, ruining rating systems, but it also just does not accomplish what review bombers want it to accomplish. It gives fandoms even worse names and makes it easier to ignore fandoms and what we want and what we desire for our favorite books and their adaptations. So if you're someone who has participated in review bombing, I'm asking you for the sake of our fandoms, please stop. 
it's it's not doing anything. Well, this has been another Bookborn PSA. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, it's kind of a difficult topic, but I just felt like I needed to cover it. If you like these kind of deep dives and rants, then please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support me. If you want to see what I'm currently reading, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.